anyone ever been to a wedding where someone actually objected? And if so, how did that go? Story 1. A few years back, my wife and I attended the wedding of one of her co-workers. It was one of those big, formal affairs held in a beautiful old church with high ceilings, stained glass windows, and everything set just so. The bride, let's call her Sarah, was a woman in her late thirties, smart and well put together. She and her fiancé had been together for a while, and from what I'd heard, they were a great match. There was a sense of excitement in the air as everyone sat in the pews, waiting for the ceremony to begin. We didn't know a lot of people at the wedding, aside from my wife's work friends, but it was shaping up to be a picture-perfect day. The ceremony began like any other. The music swelled. The bride walked down the aisle in her stunning dress, and everyone was doing that thing where they pretend not to cry as they take in the whole scene. The groom was beaming, the bride was glowing, and you could feel the love between them. Then we got to that moment, the one where the officiant says, If anyone has any reason why these two should not be married, speak now or forever hold your peace. Honestly, I've been to a lot of weddings. And that part usually just comes and goes without any fuss. It's a little tense for a second, but no one actually expects anything to happen. Well, not this time. Suddenly, out of the corner of my eye, I saw movement. A younger guy, maybe mid-twenties, stood up from the back pew and started walking down the aisle. At first, people weren't sure what was happening. Was he just leaving? Did he need to use the bathroom? But then I noticed the look on his face. He was crying. Full-on tears streaming down his cheeks, his hands trembling as he walked, like he was carrying the weight of the world on his shoulders. The air in the church got heavy real fast. I could feel everyone tensing up, waiting to see what this guy was about to do. When he reached the front of the church, he stopped right in front of the bride and groom, sobbing, his voice cracking as he spoke. Please don't do this, he pleaded. I love you. I've loved you for so long. The whole place went silent, like all the oxygen had been sucked out of the room. You could practically hear the collective gasp as people tried to figure out what was happening. The groom was standing there, stunned, his smile gone in an instant. The bride, too, looked completely blindsided, frozen in place as this guy, who no one seemed to recognize, poured his heart out in front of everyone. He continued, begging her not to go through with the wedding. His words were frantic, desperate, and it was clear that whatever was happening, it was not the kind of movie-like romantic gesture he probably imagined it would be. This wasn't love. This was obsession, and you could see it all over his face. He kept saying, I can't lose you, like they had some kind of deep, meaningful connection but the bride's reaction made it clear that she didn't feel the same way. At this point, a couple of the groomsmen stepped forward, along with an older man who had been sitting toward the back. They grabbed the young guy gently but firmly, trying to coax him out of the church without making the situation worse. The guy resisted for a second, still reaching out toward the bride, still pleading with her to stop the wedding. But eventually, the older man, who as it turned out was his father, managed to guide him away. The father looked absolutely mortified, and you could tell this wasn't the first time he'd had to step in and deal with his son's behavior. As they were walking him out, I remember the father whispering something to him. Something like, not here, not now. The son's sobs echoed through the church as they disappeared out the doors, and the tension in the room slowly began to fade. But the damage was done. It was one of the most uncomfortable, awkward, and frankly heartbreaking things I'd ever witnessed at a wedding. Afterward, when things settled down, the ceremony continued though the mood was noticeably different. There was this undercurrent of unease, like everyone was just trying to forget what had happened. The bride and groom got through their vows, kissed, and walked back down the aisle as husband and wife, but you could see in their faces that they were still shaken. It wasn't until the reception that we got the full story. The younger guy who had caused the scene, he wasn't some random wedding crasher. He was their next-door neighbor. Apparently, he had developed an unhealthy obsession with Sarah over the years despite the fact that there was never anything between them. They'd caught him several times on their security camera, peeking over their privacy fence while Sarah sunbathed in the backyard. He was always watching, always lurking, but they hadn't realized how deep his infatuation had gone until that moment at the wedding. His father, the older man who had helped escort him out, had been dealing with this for years. The son had been in and out of mental health facilities for the last three or four years struggling with what sounded like a mix of obsessive behavior and delusional thinking. It was a sad situation, and the fact that it had played out so publicly on such an important day only made it worse. The bride and groom, bless them, tried to move past it as best they could, 
They still smiled for pictures, still danced their first dance, but there was a shadow over the whole day. It's hard to fully enjoy a celebration when something like that happens. Story 2. So, I work as a wedding videographer, and I've seen my fair share of weird and wonderful moments at weddings. You'd think after attending hundreds of these things, nothing would surprise me anymore. But every now and then, something happens that sticks with you. Like the time I filmed a wedding where the officiant asked if anyone objected to the marriage. Not once, not twice, but three times. Now this wasn't just any officiant. It was a family member of the bride or groom. I never did figure out whose side they were on, but they were definitely new to officiating. That much was obvious from the get-go. You could tell by the way they nervously shuffled through their notes and stumbled over a few of the ceremonial lines that they weren't exactly comfortable with the role. No big deal, though. It happens. People get nervous at weddings all the time. But this guy took things to a whole new level of awkward. The ceremony started out pretty typical. The bride looked beautiful. The groom had that half-nervous, half-excited look on his face. And all the guests were seated, smiles on their faces, waiting for the magic to unfold. The officiant started talking about love, commitment, and all the usual things you expect to hear in a wedding. Everything was going fine until we got to that part. The part where the officiant asks, If anyone here has any reason why these two should not be married, speak now or forever hold your peace. Now usually this line gets delivered quickly, almost like it's just a box to check before moving on to the vows. People hold their breath for a second, maybe out of habit, but no one really expects anyone to say anything. The officiant says it, pauses for a second, and then moves on. But not this time. The officiant says the line, then stops. Dead silence. And when I say silence, I mean silence. No one was even shuffling in their seats or coughing awkwardly. The whole place just went completely still, waiting for him to move on. But he didn't. Instead, he stood there, looking around the room expectantly, as if he was waiting for someone to speak up. I had the camera rolling the whole time, zoomed in on the couple's faces, and you could see the discomfort start to creep in. The bride shifted her weight slightly, giving a nervous glance toward the groom, who was starting to look more confused than anything. The guests were exchanging uneasy looks, probably wondering what was going on and whether someone was actually going to say something, but no one did. Finally, after what felt like an eternity, the officiant cleared his throat and moved on with the ceremony. Crisis averted, right? Wrong. A few minutes later, just as the couple was about to start exchanging vows, the officiant paused again. And then, like some kind of nightmare repeating itself, he asked the same question again. Does anyone here have any objections to this marriage? He asked, this time with even more emphasis. You could practically hear the collective groan inside people's heads. Was he serious? Why was he asking again? Once again, dead silence. The couple was visibly uncomfortable at this point. The bride's smile had faded a little, and the groom was starting to fidget. I could see one of the bridesmaids give a tiny shake of her head, like she couldn't believe what was happening. The guests were doing that thing where they're looking around without moving their heads, just with their eyes, silently pleading for the moment to pass. But the efficient. Nope. He stood there, waiting again. He even glanced over his shoulder at the crowd, as if trying to coax someone, anyone, to speak up. Eventually, he sighed and moved on to the next part of the ceremony, but you could feel the tension in the air. People were starting to shift uncomfortably in their seats, and the couple looked like they were wondering if they'd ever get to say their vows. The whole flow of the wedding was just off. But I figured, okay, at least we're past the worst of it. Well, apparently I was wrong again. As the ceremony was wrapping up, right after the couple kissed and the officiant was about to pronounce them husband and wife, he pulled out a surprise third act. I'm not even kidding. The guy looked around one more time and asked, in the most serious tone possible, Are you sure no one has any objection? At this point, I thought I was going to drop the camera. Who does that? The couple looked like they were about to lose it, and I could hear the guests muttering to each other, some of them stifling nervous laughter, others just shaking their heads in disbelief. You could tell that if this dragged on any longer, someone would have objected just to get it over with, but no one did. Mercifully, no one said a word, and after another uncomfortable pause, the efficient finally wrapped it up. All right, then, he said. I now pronounce you husband and wife. The relief in the room was palpable. The guests actually clapped a little louder than usual, like they were just happy it was finally over. The couple made their way down the aisle, still smiling, but you could tell that the weirdness of it all had taken some of the shine off the day. Story 3. Let me take you back to the day of the wedding. My wife and I had been dating for four years, so you'd think her mom would have warmed up to me by then. Nope. She was polite enough, but it was no secret that she didn't approve of me. It wasn't anything outrageous. 
I didn't have some wild past or anything, but I guess I just wasn't what she had in mind for her daughter. She never said it outright, but it was in those little, passive-aggressive remarks and awkward silences at family dinners that gave it away. The wedding itself was a beautiful day, perfect weather, everything planned out to the last detail. The ceremony was simple and sweet, but as soon as we took our places at the altar, I could hear it. A faint sniffle. At first, I thought, okay, maybe she's a bit emotional. This is her daughter getting married after all. But then it just kept going. Sniffle after sniffle, followed by what I could only describe as muffled sobbing. I turned my head slightly, and there she was. My mother-in-law, dabbing her eyes with a tissue, looking absolutely miserable. And let me tell you, those were not tears of joy. She wasn't even trying to hide it. There she sat, crying through the entire ceremony, eyes red and puffy. I'm sure she wanted to bolt out of there, but she kept it together enough to stay seated and make it through. Meanwhile, I'm up there trying to focus on the vows, trying to remember every promise I've rehearsed in my head while I could feel her eyes burning into the back of my head like, are you really going to marry my daughter? When the ceremony ended, I thought maybe that'd be the end of it. Nope. It continued through the entire photo session. Every shot we took, she was there in the background crying. You know how you want those nice family pictures for the wedding album? Well, let's just say, ours feature a lot of shots where you can clearly see her weeping in the corner, clutching a tissue like it was the end of the world. It's hilarious looking back now, but at the time it was like, wow, I think this is actually happening. The reception was fine, though I did notice her sitting at the table with a stiff drink in her hand. Not exactly the life of the party. But hey, I wasn't about to let it ruin the day. We had fun, danced the night away, and after the wedding, my wife and I settled into our life together. I figured over time her mom would come around. And, well, I wasn't entirely wrong. It just took a few decades. Fast forward 43 years. Yes, you heard that right. We've been together happily for over four decades. We built a life, raised kids, had all the ups and downs that come with marriage. And somewhere along the way, my mother-in-law started to warm up to me. These days, I'm her favorite son-in-law. It's funny how time changes things. Maybe it was watching us build a stable, loving home. Or maybe it was just the fact that I never went away. But she finally accepted me. But here's the kicker. Last August, she moved in with us. Yep, the same woman who cried her eyes out on our wedding day, the one who didn't want her daughter to marry me, now lives with us. And we get along great. It's wild how life works out. A few months ago, we were going through some old photos, and of course, we came across the wedding pictures. There's one in particular where she's standing next to us, face streaked with tears, looking like she's at a funeral instead of her daughter's wedding. I couldn't resist bringing it up, teasing her about all the crying she did that day. Without missing a beat, she looks at the picture, shakes her head and says, Oh, I had such a terrible sinus infection. Story four. So my brother-in-law, let's call him Dave, is known far and wide for being a prankster. He's the type of guy who can't resist pulling a joke at any given opportunity. We're talking about the kind of person who will show up to a serious event in a tuxedo t-shirt or swap the labels on your condiments when you're not looking. Everyone loves him because his pranks aren't mean-spirited, just good-natured, laugh-out-loud funny. He's got that charm that makes him impossible to stay mad at. So when Dave married my wife's little sister, Sarah, we all knew there was no way he was going to let his wedding day go by without something wild happening. But even knowing him as well as we did, none of us were prepared for the stunt he pulled during their wedding ceremony. Now Sarah is just as fun-loving as Dave, but she can hold her own when it comes to his shenanigans. She's been the target of more than a few pranks, but she usually gets him back just as hard. So when they decided to get married, the two of them cooked up something legendary, a prank so over the top, so out of left field, that it had the entire wedding party absolutely rolling on the floor laughing. Here's how it went down. The wedding day was beautiful. Classic outdoor ceremony, perfect weather, flowers everywhere, the whole works. Sarah looked stunning. Dave was rocking his tux, and everything was set for a sweet, romantic day. Most of the family was there, dressed to the nines, expecting a traditional, heartfelt ceremony. And for the most part, that's how it started. The officiant, one of Dave's uncles who was acting as the justice of the peace, was doing a great job, keeping everything formal and by the book. Everyone was quiet, listening to the vows, and it all seemed like your standard wedding fair. But then we hit that moment, the infamous, if anyone here has any reason why these two should not be married, speak now or forever hold your peace. For a second, everything was still, like at every wedding. People glance around nervously, maybe hold their breath for a beat. But no one ever expects anyone to actually speak up. But then, out of nowhere, this middle-aged woman stands up from the back row. 
She's dressed in this old-school floral dress, clutching a handbag, and you can see that she's emotional. I object, she shouts, and suddenly everyone's heads whip around. My first thought was, who the hell is this lady? Because none of us recognized her. She starts making her way down the aisle, and she's in full tears, crying out, she'll never love you like I do. At this point, the crowd is dead silent. You could hear a pin drop. Dave's side of the family is looking horrified, and Sarah's side is equally confused. Meanwhile, I'm thinking, oh no, this can't be real, right? This is too crazy, even for Dave. But the woman doesn't stop. She's practically wailing as she reaches the front of the aisle. I told you this wasn't going to work out. You have to leave, she screams, pointing at Sarah. She's clutching her chest like she's in the middle of some melodramatic soap opera, just full-on weeping. By this point, the bride's mother has her hand over her mouth and a few of the older guests look like they're about to faint. Then the woman turns to Dave and says, she'll never make you happy like I can. At this point, Sarah has her hand over her heart, pretending to be absolutely flabbergasted. The woman finally stops and stares at Dave like she's waiting for him to run off with her right then and there. That's when Dave, with the most serious face you've ever seen, turns to Sarah and says, I, I thought I told you about Cheryl. That was it. The second he said that, half the crowd lost it. Sarah doubled over laughing, and suddenly the whole place erupted into laughter as it finally clicked. This was a prank. The older woman, she was an actor. Dave had hired a 50-something-year-old actress to play the part of a heartbroken lover, and she absolutely nailed it. The crying, the drama, the timing, it was all perfectly over the top. And the best part? Only a handful of people were in on it. Sarah knew, obviously, as did the efficient, Dave's uncle, and a couple of other close family members. The rest of us were totally blindsided. The actress played her part right to the end, storming off dramatically after Dave's confession, leaving the rest of us still wiping tears of laughter from our eyes. The best man, Dave's brother, was literally doubled over, clutching his stomach, trying to catch his breath. People were in the aisles, gasping for air because they were laughing so hard. And once the dust settled, the wedding ceremony resumed, back to normal like nothing had happened. It was like the funniest, most awkward, most incredible thing I'd ever seen at a wedding. The best part? The prank fit Dave and Sarah's personalities so perfectly. It was them, full of humor, not afraid to poke fun at themselves, and always up for a laugh. The whole thing was so well executed that it became the stuff of legend in our family. Every time someone brings up wedding stories, this one is the first that comes to mind. Story 5. I wasn't around for my husband's first marriage but I've heard the story enough times to feel like I was right there in the front row, watching the whole thing unfold in slow motion. You know those moments where you can almost see the disaster coming, like the universe is sending a giant neon warning sign, but for some reason, everyone just powers through? Yeah, this was one of those. It was his wedding day, a big affair with all the trimmings. The bride was gorgeous, the groom looked sharp, and the guests filled the place with a kind of nervous excitement. But there was something off. A tension just beneath the surface. Everyone could feel it, but no one wanted to say it out loud. Well, almost no one. The ceremony was going smoothly, right up until the part where they were about to say their vows. That's when her brother, who had been fidgeting in his seat like he had something to get off his chest, suddenly stood up. You could practically hear the collective inhale from the crowd. My husband, already nervous, looked at him, probably thinking he was going to give some emotional speech or crack a joke to lighten the mood. But nope, that wasn't the case. Instead, the brother of the bride in front of everyone said, Say no, man. You can still be happy. I wasn't there. But I imagine that moment felt like the longest pause in history. The kind of silence that makes your heart skip a beat. Where the air in the room seems to freeze. And everyone's waiting to see what's going to happen next. My husband didn't know what to do. He was standing there, probably thinking this was just some poorly timed joke. Maybe part of him even thought about taking the advice right there and running. But you know how weddings are, momentum, expectations, all those people staring at you, and instead of walking away, he just laughed it off and kept going. They went through with it. He said his vows, she said hers, and they were married. But I think deep down, he knew that his brother-in-law was right. Maybe they both did. The marriage, unsurprisingly, didn't last. It wasn't some quick, clean break either. It turned into a long, drawn-out, messy divorce, full of all the classic drama. Fighting over every little thing, resentments boiling over, the kind of split that leaves emotional scars. If you've ever seen a relationship where it feels like both people are trying to win the breakup, you know exactly what I'm talking about. The crazy thing is, despite all that, my husband and his former brother-in-law ended up staying best friends. In fact, 
They're even closer now than when he was married to his sister. It's like he lost a wife but gained a brother. The two of them are practically inseparable, watching games together, grabbing beers on the weekends, and giving each other a hard time just like siblings do. And the brother-in-law, well, he never lets him forget that one infamous moment at the wedding. He loves to remind him, I told you, man, I was trying to save you. Every now and then, they'll be hanging out and out of nowhere. The brother-in-law will bring it up. Remember your wedding. You could have listened to me, man. I gave you a way out. My husband always rolls his eyes and laughs it off, but it's a running joke that never dies. And you know what? As much as my husband might groan about it, he doesn't seem to mind the reminder. There's something oddly comforting about the whole thing. It's like a shared bond between the two of them, an inside joke born from a situation that could have gone so much worse. His brother-in-law was probably right, and everyone knew it. But in the end, it all worked out the way it was supposed to. My husband walked away from that messy divorce with some hard-earned life lessons, and his brother-in-law walked away with a new best friend. Story 6. I was at a small wedding ceremony once, the kind where it's just close friends and family. Maybe 30 people, tops. It was indoors, in one of those cozy, intimate settings where you can almost feel everyone's breath in the room. You know, the kind of wedding where every little sound echoes, every cough is noticed, and there's this unspoken pressure to keep everything perfect. The air was heavy, not with tension exactly, but like everyone was holding their breath, waiting for the big moment when the vows would be exchanged. The bride looked beautiful, glowing in that way brides always seem to. The groom stood tall, nervous, but trying to look composed his hands fiddling just a bit with the edge of his jacket. The room was silent except for the minister's voice, which rang out clearly as he went through the usual wedding script. Everyone was focused, their eyes bouncing between the couple and the minister, fully invested in the moment. Then came the part that always feels like a ticking bomb at wedding. If anyone here has any reason why these two should not be joined in holy matrimony, speak now or forever. Hold your peace. It's one of those lines that seems like a formality, right? I mean, no one ever actually speaks up. It's just something you say to move the ceremony along, part of the script. But this time, the silence that followed wasn't the usual, peaceful kind. It felt off, like the room was waiting for something to happen. Suddenly, before anyone could react, there was this loud thud. The sound was sharp, cutting through the air like a crack of thunder, and everyone jumped in their seats. Eyes darted around the room, trying to figure out what just happened. And then we saw it. The picture of the bride's dead grandmother, which had been hanging on the wall above, had fallen straight to the ground. It was surreal. The kind of thing that makes your skin prickle because it doesn't make sense. The picture had been perfectly secure on the wall for who knows how long. And then, in that exact moment, it just fell. No one touched it. No one was anywhere near it. There was no gust of wind, no sudden jolt, just this eerie, inexplicable crash. It was like the room itself was speaking filling the silence in a way none of us expected. I remember looking around, seeing everyone's faces. Some people were wide-eyed, others just looked confused. But the bride? She was pale. She didn't say a word, but her eyes told the whole story. You could see the doubt creeping in like some part of her knew this was more than just a coincidence. The groom tried to laugh it off, a nervous chuckle escaping his lips, but it didn't land. The room was too heavy for that. Even the minister paused for a second, glancing at the fallen picture before clearing his throat and pushing forward. He finished the ceremony as if nothing had happened, but you could tell it had rattled everyone. The rest of the ceremony felt off, like everyone was just going through the motions. The vows were said, the rings exchanged, but the energy was gone. Instead of feeling joyous or celebratory, it felt like we were all waiting for the other shoe to drop. Something had shifted and no one could shake it. The reception afterward was small, just like the ceremony, but it was hard to ignore what had happened. People whispered about it in hushed tones, trying to make sense of it. Some chalked it up to a weird coincidence. Others, especially the older folks, were convinced it was a sign. You could almost feel the room splitting between those who believed in omens and those who didn't want to think too hard about it. I overheard one of the bride's aunts whispering to another guest. That was her grandmother's way of saying no. She never liked him, even when she was alive. Whether that was true or not, who's to say? but it planted a seed of doubt in everyone's mind, and once that kind of thing takes root, it's hard to shake. They went through with the rest of the day, cutting the cake, taking the pictures, doing all the typical wedding stuff, but there was this undercurrent of unease that lingered, like everyone was trying to forget what had just happened, but couldn't quite manage it. The bride smiled, but there was something behind it, a kind of forced happiness that didn't quite reach her eyes, and, well... I guess the grandmother's picture wasn't wrong, if you believe in that sort of thing. Within a year, they were divorced.
It wasn't even a slow unraveling either. It was quick, messy, and bitter, like they both realized almost immediately that they'd made a mistake. All that hope and excitement they had on their wedding day, despite the strange incident, just fizzled out. Story 7. I used to make wedding videos for a living, and over the years, I've seen just about everything a wedding could throw at you. Awkward speeches, kids running wild, equipment failing at the worst moments. But one wedding stands out from all the rest. It was an outdoor wedding, and the couple had chosen this beautiful spot high up on one side of a valley. The view was stunning. Lush greenery stretching out in every direction, the kind of place where you almost expect to hear violins and birds chirping in perfect harmony. Now, the day hadn't started off so picture perfect. There had been some pretty nasty storms earlier, with rain pouring down in sheets, threatening to ruin the whole affair. But by some miracle, the skies cleared just in time, leaving the air fresh and crisp with that post-rain scent. You could see everyone silently thanking the weather gods, hoping it would hold for the next couple of hours. By the time the ceremony got underway, everything seemed to be back on track. The guests were settled into their seats, and the bride and groom stood under this elegant floral arch, exchanging shy smiles. My job was simple, set up the camera, make sure the sound was good, and then step back. During the vows, I don't mess with the camera at all. I just let it run and give the couple their moment. So there I was, spaced out a little bit, just taking in the scenery, when I noticed a radio tower across the valley. It was off in the distance a faint silhouette against the sky, barely noticeable unless you were looking for it. My mind started to wander. I wasn't really paying attention to the ceremony anymore, just enjoying the peace and quiet, thinking about how lucky we were that the weather had cleared. And then, out of nowhere, this massive bolt of lightning struck the radio tower. It was like watching a scene from a movie where everything slows down for dramatic effect. The lightning hit with such precision, a bright jagged line splitting the sky in two. It felt surreal, like nature had decided to drop a special effect right into the middle of this wedding. I had just enough time to think, boy, when the thunder gets here, it's going to be loud. You know how you can count the seconds between lightning and thunder to figure out how far away the storm is? Well, I didn't even get that chance. Almost immediately after the lightning hit, the minister, completely oblivious to what had just happened, was right in the middle of one of those iconic wedding lines. If anyone here objects to this union, let him speak now or forever, hold his peace. And that's when it hit. The loudest, most earth-shattering clap of thunder I've ever heard in my life exploded across the valley. It was like the entire sky cracked open right above us. The sound ricocheted off the hills, echoing in waves, making it feel like the ground was shaking. I swear it was so loud I felt it in my chest. The whole crowd froze. The bride and groom just stood there, wide-eyed, gripping each other's hands a little tighter. You could almost see the collective thought passing through everyone's mind. Was that a sign? For a few seconds, it was absolute silence. No one moved, no one breathed. We were all just standing there, like statues, waiting for something else to happen. Maybe another bolt of lightning? The sky to open up and swallow us whole? Who knew at that point? Then, slowly, the minister took a deep breath, looked around the crowd to make sure no one had been smote by some divine force, and said, Well, that's never happened before. You could feel the tension in the air break a little, people nervously chuckling, trying to convince themselves that it was just a coincidence. But still you could see the uncertainty on their faces. Was it just a freak accident of nature, or had something bigger just weighed in on this marriage? I kept filming, trying not to laugh at the absurdity of it all. You could tell the minister was trying to keep things moving, but there was no way to ignore what had just happened. He continued with the ceremony, but the energy was definitely different. People were on edge, waiting to see if the sky had any more opinions to share. Despite the thunderous interruption, the couple got through their vows without a hitch, kissed, and walked down the aisle as husband and wife. The rest of the day went off without any more supernatural events, although the lightning strike became the only thing anyone wanted to talk about. People joked about it at the reception, making light of the fact that the universe decided to speak up during the exact moment when objections were supposed to be voiced. The couple took it all in stride laughing it off, but you could tell it was something they'd be telling their grandkids about one day. It's been over ten years since that wedding, and as far as I know, they're still married. I like to think the lightning strike was nature's way of giving its blessing, or maybe just adding a little drama to the day. Either way, it's the kind of story that sticks with you. You don't forget a moment like that. I filmed a lot of weddings, but nothing else has come close to that sheer jaw-dropping timing. Story 8 Here's an old story, but it's a classic, one of those wedding tales that gets passed down because it's just too wild to forget. 
This one happened back in the 70s, and it was shared with me by the guy who actually married my parents. He's a bit of a character, and every now and then, he'll bust out this story when the conversation turns to weddings and unexpected drama. It went down just like this. The wedding ceremony was moving along smoothly, as they usually do. The bride looked stunning, the groom was all smiles, and the guests were quietly watching, probably daydreaming about the reception food or hoping the ceremony wouldn't drag on too long. You know how it is at weddings. Most people just want to get to the good part. The drinks, the dancing, the cake. Then came the moment. That fateful line. Does anyone object to this union? Now, we've all been to enough weddings to know that no one ever expects anyone to actually say anything during that part. It's just tradition, a formality. It's one of those phrases that's supposed to float by unnoticed before the real action happens. But not this time. From somewhere in the back, a woman stood up and in a voice loud enough to send shockwaves through the entire room, she said, I do. The room went dead silent. I mean, you could hear a pin drop. Everyone turned to look at her, confused, shocked, and maybe even a little excited. It's not every day you get a front row seat to a wedding interruption. The bride and groom were frozen at the altar, looking like they'd just seen a ghost. Then the woman added, that's my husband. Now, if there's one way to absolutely derail a wedding, that's it. The poor minister didn't know what to do. He just stood there, fumbling for words while the entire crowd shifted in their seats, waiting to see what would happen next. The bride, groom, and the woman who objected quickly slipped away into a side room with the minister. I can only imagine the kind of conversation that was happening behind that closed door. Outside, in the main hall, the guests were buzzing, whispering to each other, trying to piece together what was going on. Some probably thought it was a joke or some kind of weird prank but most people were just plain confused. After what felt like an eternity, the minister came back out, looking a little more frazzled than when the ceremony had started. He announced that the wedding was being paused and everyone was going to be sent home. The murmurs in the crowd grew louder, and you could feel the disappointment mixed with curiosity. People wanted to know why. What had happened in that little room? Well, turns out, the woman who stood up wasn't just making a scene. She had proof. She came armed with paperwork showing that the groom was still legally married to her. Apparently, the couple had started divorce proceedings months, maybe even years before, but they had never officially finalized it. Somewhere along the way, the paperwork got lost or forgotten, and legally, they were still husband and wife. So there you have it. The groom was trying to marry someone else while still technically married to this other woman. Whether it was intentional or just a massive oversight, who knows? But in that moment, it didn't matter. The wedding was off. There wasn't going to be any I do's, no first dance, no throwing of the bouquet, just a whole lot of confusion and a lot of people awkwardly walking back to their cars, wondering how in the world that could have happened. From what I heard later, the bride was absolutely crushed. You can imagine the embarrassment of standing there, thinking you're about to start this new chapter of your life, only to have someone come in and slam the door shut in the most dramatic way possible. As for the groom, well, he didn't look too happy either, but honestly, I'm not sure how much sympathy he deserved after that bombshell. The whole thing ended with everyone being sent home, the venue left half-decorated, the food untouched, and the band probably packing up before they even got to play a single note. It's the kind of wedding story that people talk about for years because, let's face it, how often does something like that happen? I can't say for sure what happened to the bride and groom after that day. Did they ever work it out? Did they try again after the paperwork was straightened out? Or did the bride just walk away and leave the groom to deal with his unfinished business? I never got the full story. Story 9. I was the maid of honor at my best friend's wedding. And let me tell you, what was supposed to be the happiest day of her life turned into a giant mess, all because one of the groomsmen thought he'd be the funniest guy in the room. Now, I know wedding day jitters can lead to some questionable behavior, but this? This took the cake. The ceremony started off beautifully. The weather was perfect, the bride was stunning, and everything seemed to be going off without a hitch. I was standing beside my best friend, holding back tears as she walked down the aisle to marry the love of her life. The groom, too, looked like he was about to burst with joy. You could feel the love between them. It was one of those moments that just felt right, like the universe was aligning for these two to be together. Then we got to that part of the ceremony. You know the infamous line, if anyone here has any reason why these two should not be joined in holy matrimony, speak now or forever hold your peace. It's one of those things that's just a formality, right? No one ever says anything except in movies, or so we thought. One of the groomsmen, a guy who'd had one too many drinks before the ceremony, 
yeah, he'd been hitting the pre-wedding cocktails pretty hard, thought it'd be hilarious to object. Out of nowhere, he raised his hand and said, I object, with this stupid grin plastered across his face. Now, everyone in the crowd assumed it was a joke. But here's the thing. Legally, an objection has to be taken seriously. Even if it's a joke, the efficient is required by law to pause the ceremony and investigate. And that's exactly what happened. The efficient looked as if he was trying to decide whether to laugh it off or start asking questions, but in the end, he had no choice. He called a halt to the whole thing and pulled the groomsmen aside for questioning. The bride's face went from joyful to confused to furious in about two seconds flat. The groom? He looked like he wanted to deck his friend right then and there. But it didn't stop there. This guy, this absolute idiot, decided to keep the joke going. Even when the efficient pulled him aside and asked if this was real or not, he kept up the charade claiming there were reasons he couldn't share. Meanwhile, everyone is just sitting there, waiting, the tension building with every passing second. It was like watching a slow-motion car crash, and I was standing there, feeling completely helpless. Eventually, the officiant said he would not proceed with the ceremony unless the objection was proven unfounded. He even warned that the wedding might have to be canceled altogether if the guy didn't drop the act. So, not only did the officiant have to interrogate this so-called friend, but both sets of parents had to get involved too. They had to ask multiple guests whether there was any truth to this ridiculous objection. It turned into a full-blown investigation, like some kind of courtroom drama, right in the middle of what was supposed to be a beautiful, love-filled day. It took over an hour to get things sorted out. The bride was practically fuming. The groom looked like he was ready to disown half his groomsmen, and all of us were standing around, trying to figure out how it had come to this. To make matters worse, there was another wedding scheduled at the same venue right after ours, and because of the delay, their guests started arriving while we were still trying to sort out this disaster. So, on top of everything, there were people from another wedding standing around, watching us like we were some kind of circus act. Finally, after what felt like an eternity, the groomsmen caved and admitted it was all a joke. The efficient, clearly annoyed, warned him that if he pulled any more stunts, he'd be kicked out of the ceremony altogether. But the damage was done. The whole thing was a giant mess, and it threw off the timing for everything else that day. The ceremony, which was supposed to be this long, beautiful, personal event, ended up being shortened because we were running out of time. Once the ceremony finally ended and we moved on to the photo shoot, I decided I'd had enough. I was still holding on to this fancy shoe I'd had dyed to match my dress for the day, and the minute I got a clear shot, I clocked that groomsman right upside the head with it. Now, I didn't seriously injure the guy, but I definitely made my point. The bride and groom were concerned for his safety after that, though honestly, I think they were more embarrassed by his behavior than anything else. They asked him not to come to the reception, which frankly was a blessing for everyone involved. As for the bride and groom, well, they dropped him as a friend immediately after the wedding. Who could blame them? This was supposed to be the happiest day of their lives, and this guy almost ruined it with his joke. But here's the good news. They've been happily married for almost 30 years now, so in the end, it all worked out. They'll be celebrating their anniversary this June, and they always laugh about how that groomsman tried to throw a wrench in their day but didn't succeed. Story 10. I used to work as a waitress at a fancy stately home, and most of my shifts were during weddings. Let me tell you, when you're working weddings regularly, you get to witness some pretty wild stuff. But nothing tops what I saw during one particularly dramatic reception. It was the kind of chaos you couldn't make up if you tried. So, the actual wedding ceremony took place at a church nearby, and by the time the guests arrived at our venue for the reception, everything seemed to be going smoothly. The bride and groom looked happy, guests were milling around with drinks, and we, the staff, were doing our best to keep things running like a well-oiled machine. Then he showed up. A guy, clearly out of place and out of breath, rocked up well after the ceremony was over. Turns out he thought he was still in time to crash the wedding. This guy wasn't just some random guest. No, he came with a mission. He strode right up to the bride and groom in front of the whole wedding party and declared his undying love for the bride. But that wasn't all. Oh no, he dropped the bombshell that he'd been sleeping with her for months. You could feel the energy in the room change in an instant. The shock was visible on everyone's faces. Guests froze mid-bite. Glasses stopped halfway to lips and the entire place descended into chaos. The bride started crying, the groom looked like someone had sucker-punched him, and then the inevitable shouting and drama unfolded. The best part? This guy wasn't even supposed to be at the ceremony. He had been invited to the reception after the vows were exchanged, 
and mistakenly thought he was showing up to the church to object. What a genius plan, huh? Obviously, he was quickly chucked out of the venue, but the damage was done. Cue more tears, more shouting, and a whole lot of what the hell just happened. Vibes from the guests. Somehow, in the middle of all this, the groom decided to forgive the bride. Yep, he was that kind of guy, a total wet lettuce. They were outside, hugging and crying like they'd just been through some epic Romeo and Juliet-level tragedy. You'd think the drama would end there. But no, this wedding was just getting started. Later on, while everyone was trying to get back into the party spirit, someone overheard the chief bridesmaid talking to her friend. Turns out, she had also been sleeping with the bride, the cherry on top, right? Now here's where it really goes off the rails. The groom's grandmother, this sweet-looking lady in her 70s, was nearby when she overheard this little revelation. Without hesitation, she marched straight up to the bride and punched her square in the face. I mean, who could blame her? The bride was caught cheating not once, but twice, and still somehow thought she could walk around like nothing had happened. You'd think the groom would finally get a clue after all this, but nope. He forgave the bride yet again, and they went home together at the end of the night. I guess he wasn't really that surprised by her behavior, or maybe he just couldn't let go. Either way, it was one of the wildest things I'd ever seen at a wedding, and that's saying something. But hey, since I'm already telling you this story, let me hit you with another one that happened at the same venue just a few weeks later. This one was more of a slow burn disaster, but trust me, it's still a doozy. This wedding was a big deal. The groom's family was loaded, and they definitely carried themselves like they were better than everyone else, especially the groom's mother. She was the kind of person who made sure everyone knew her family was of a higher class than the bride. She gave us hell during the setup. Nothing was good enough for her. She kept changing things at the last minute, and she spoke to us like we were the dirt beneath her feet. The bride's family, meanwhile, was pretty laid back and nice, the kind of people who just wanted to have a good time. About halfway through the reception, the chaos started. Someone's handbag went missing, and the groom's mother, true to form, stormed into the kitchen accusing all the staff of being thieves. She demanded that we have our bags searched and even threatened to call the police. Our manager, who was way more patient than I ever would have been, calmly told her to cool down and let security handle it. So security started searching the place, and eventually, they checked the men's bathroom. That's where things took a turn. They found a guy standing in one of the stalls his feet visible under the door, and he refused to come out at first. After some coaxing, he finally opened the door, and there he was, with not one, but two women's handbags. And it gets worse. This guy had been, well, let's just say he was enjoying himself with the stolen bags, if you catch my drift. To top it all off, he was completely out of his mind on coke. And who was this guy, you ask? None other than the groom's brother the son of the same woman who had just finished accusing us of being criminals. The look on her face when she found out? Priceless. She didn't stick around to apologize, though. She grabbed her stuff and left in a hurry, her tail between her legs, while the police came to arrest her son. 